back students to one more session of your hydrocarbons so today the topic which we are going to learn is isomerism we have seen uh, the nomenclature of alkenes in the previous video now once we learn the isomerism concept it's easy for me to teach you the geometrical isomerism uh, position isomerism in alkenes right so basically when i have to speak or uh, define this term isomerism how can we do, basically isomerism how can it be defined it is a phenomenon right what is this phenomenon in which you know suppose if i have a compound or two or more compounds which say where they have the molecular formula is similar so with this concept of isomerism i can uh, assign different molecular structures to them so once again what is isomerism isomerism is a phenomena or it is defined as a phenomena by virtue of which what when two or more compounds if they have the same molecular formula i can I, we can assign them different molecular structures that is a isomerism so now what is important for us find for naming the alkenes is classification basically isomerism is classified under two categories the first type is structural isomerism it is also called as constitutional isomerism or isomers so structural or constitutional isomers this is the first classification of isomers or isomers mers means units the second type of classification is called stereo isomers it is st r e o stereo isomerism or stereo isomers this structural isomer is again divided into different types what are they it's divided into chain isomerism chain isomerism it can be divided into position isomerism it can be divided into functional group isomerism it can be divided or so the next category is called metamerism the next class of category is tautomerism i'll be teaching about all these the next category is ring chain isomerism ring chain isomerism right so now let us come back to stereoisomerism stereoisomerism is again classified into like uh, if i have to see it's again classified into an isomerism also we have written right now let us come back and write stereoisomerism stereoisomerism is again of two types what is that? i mean two types means it is also uh, like uh, divided into geometrical isomerism the geometrical geometrical isomers or isomerism and the second category is optical isomerism or optical isomers optical isomerism or optical isomers right so geometrical isomerism is again divided to divided into two types what is that cis isomer and trans isomer optical isomers they are again divided into enantiomers diastereomers like that there is one more category of stereoisomerism which i have to mention you that is called conformations conformations right done now what am i going to use for your uh, naming nomenclature of uh, uh, alkenes is i'll be using cis and trans isomerism i'll be also uh, explaining you the position isomerism also so as of now i'm going to take cis and trans isomerism i'll be taking the example or the concept of uh, position isomerism as well as chain isomerism in this uh, for uh, explaining the alkenes right suppose if i have to speak about geometrical isomerism first i'll be picking up um, this particular uh, geometrical isomerism concept and then taking certain examples suppose if i have to take or speak about geometrical isomers what are geometrical isomers how many types so i say geometrical isomers are again divided into cis and trans isn't it isomerism or the units are called isomers what are they divided into they are divided into cis type of cis isomer and they are divided into trans isomer okay let me take an example then so many worksheets uh, equations will be doing right so this is isomer trans isomer what uh, actually do, do they mean what is the example we will see right suppose if i have to take cis isomer 
the most important thing you should remember is this is shown by alkenes and not alkenes done right cis means same side trans means opposite side remember that suppose if i take an example c double bond c and around carbon tetravalency is so four here also c double bond c around carbon tetravalency four right cis means suppose if i have one group here hydrogen on the same side i should have one more here if i have ch3 on the same side you should have ch3 so now total number of carbon atoms are 1 2 3 4 it is but so what is the name of this compound this is called cis but to in this is the compound okay yes cis isomer means having groups on the same side right now let us write this compound trans means what i am taking the same example but here hydrogen should be in opposite side now this ch3 and ch3 will be on the opposite side so this is called trans but to in so this is your trans isomer hope the concept is clear students cis isomer means on the same side trans isomer means on the opposite side now basically when i have to speak about the uh, what what possibilities are there for forming a cis and trans isomer that means which is possible suppose if i have to uh, uh, write about the possibilities of the conditions always remember for a geometrical conditions for forming geometrical isomers some or geometrical isomer or i showed geometrical isomerism phenomenon is isomerism isomer means the units which are showing the concept so the first condition for showing the geometrical isomerism is they should have presence of double bond when there is double bond only it's going to show geometrical isomerism remember that second important thing is the two atoms in that see i told you know h ch3 so two atoms or groups attached should be different attached should be different remember that for example see here a b c c a b now see here the different isn't it so this is possible suppose if i take a a c c a b is this possible not possible why it is not possible because two groups are similar here so this is not possible suppose if i take this combination a a c c b b is this combination possible this combination also is not possible because it has similar group so the first condition for this is it should have double bond second condition is two atoms whatever are there it should have different groups what are the properties of uh, geometrical isomers let us see basically they just geometrical isomerism what way are they different right so geometrical isomerism or isomers okay geometrical isomers what are the difference in properties we have studied the conditions now we'll see what are the difference in properties suppose if i have to take the geometrical isomers the first important property dipole moment dipole moment what are the two geometrical isomers as i said cis isomer and trans isomer so when i have to speak about cis and trans isomer first important thing the dipole moment of these it varies both cis and trans will vary so we will write vary means both will be different let us take an example we take c double bond c 1 2 3 4 so this is cis isomer suppose if i take c double bond c 1 2 3 4 h h ch3 ch3 this is trans isn't it right now i have to write cis and show you so let me turn the page like this yes this is h 
This is H, CH3, CH3. This is cis isomer. So when I have to write the dipole moment of this, in the first case, the dipole moment of this and the dipole moment of this, both are on the similar size side. So mu value will be equal to 0.33 d, d by. But here in this case, what's happening there in the opposite side? So this dipole moment and this dipole moment gets cancelled. So here the dipole moment is 0. So are you not finding the cis and the trans isomerism dipole moment is varying? So that's the first concept. Right. Now let's come back and see one more uh, example. Let me adjust. Yes. Fine. So when I have to take the next example or the next uh, property in which they vary. Next property is boiling point. Right. So when I have to compare boiling point of both. Always remember the cis isomer boiling point is greater than trans isomer. Remember that. Suppose if I take an example, the cis isomer. Here the cis isomer boiling point is 277 Kelvin. I have taken certain example. Here the trans isomer is 274 Kelvin only. Now what is the reason for this difference? So basically when I take a cis isomer, what will happen? There is greater polarity. Right? When there is greater polarity, what will happen? The stronger interparticular force, isn't it? Polarity is there here, it got cancelled. But here, polarity exists means what happens? Stronger interparticular forces will exist. So, let us write the reason here. Greater polarity. I am writing the reason for what? Why is it more? Why is this more than trans? So, greater polarity means stronger interparticular interparticular forces. Yes. So, because of this, cis so isomer has a greater uh, boiling point than trans. Now, next important melting point. Let us write a concept of melting point. So, when I have to speak about melting point, cis isomer melting point is less than trans what is the reason boiling point we said it is more but here melting point cis isomer has a melting point lower than trans what is the reason so in trans what happens let us write the reason in trans molecules are closely packed molecules are closely packed in solid state why due to symmetry due to symmetry that's the reason melting point is uh, greater than your because the crystal lattice is tightly packed because of this the melting point is greater than Cisisomer. So these are the conditions, students. Hope the concept is clear. Now I'll be doing a worksheet based on this, based on the geometrical isomerism as well as this one. Okay. So before I have to explain about the uh, worksheet, I think I have to give you a small example also about the position isomerism. As I said in the worksheet, I'll be having both. Let me take that example also. Right. So now we will. Give, I'll give you a quick idea about position isomerism. Then we will start with the worksheet. Suppose uh, two things. I said well, according to the classification, we have position isomerism, uh, chain isomerism like that, isn't it? So let us see one uh, example about position isomerism. And we will see an example about chain isomerism. Right. So suppose if I take a basic example. Let me take an example that is but one in. So, I have told you nomenclature. Let us write this. 1, but means 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon. In the first carbon, there is double bond. Suppose if, if the same thing, I can shift the double bond from here till here. So, this becomes but to in. Isn't it? I am just changing the position. 
um, uh, the position of this double bond. So from here, this becomes C single bond, then becomes double bond. Then the, now it is butyl two in position. Now in the third one, what can I do? I can shift one methyl group to any of this position. I can shift this one here, or I can shift this one here. So the next combination is two methyl propene because I, now double bond shifting is over. Now my uh, possibility is I can shift the methyl group. How does this look? One, two, three. This is it propene. So double bond here. And the second carbon you have methyl group. So this is 2 methyl, 1, 2, 2 methyl propene. Now let us number this as 1, 2, and 3. Now, what are position isomers? Just see. 1 and 2 are position isomers. 1 and 2 are position isomers. What are chain isomers? 1 and 3 are chain isomers. What is this? Let us see. Position isomers means which differ in the position of the double bond or with the, the bond or they differ in the position of the substituent or any functional group. When it comes to chain isomerism, what happened? Here it was straight chain. Now it is, here it has become uh, a branched chain, isn't it? So that's why they are called chain isomers where the, a straight chain forms a branch chain. So, hope students you have got an idea about geometrical isomers as well as position as well as chain isomers. So, I will meet you again in the next video with the nomenclature of alkenes.